A game-breaking move made by the New York Knicks as Carl Anthony Towns finally gets traded to the New York Knicks. The era for Cat at Minnesota reached its end. It is now Anthony Edwards' team and always was Ant-Man's team, even with Cat on there. But now for the Knicks, New York gets an upgrade in the center position and because of that, it raised their chances at becoming a Dark Horse Finals or even a championship contender in the Eastern Conference and one of the teams that can challenge Boston come playoff time. The Knicks had a great offseason, especially in the area of retooling this roster and the moves they made, it is clear that they're in win now mode. So in this video, I finished project how far can the New York Knicks go this season. But first, hey man, say man, this is the A-Man Show back at it again for more content. Be sure to subscribe, I post NBA content, turn on post notifications so that way you don't miss anything new from me. Anyways, grab your popcorn, relax, and enjoy the vid. As y'all know, the Knicks and the Timberwolves made a pretty small deal that consists of the Knicks adding Dante DiVincenzo, Julius Randle, and a Pistons first round pick of next year's draft to Minnesota in exchange for Cat. For the Knicks side, the departure of Isaiah Hartenstein to the OKC Thunder was a big loss for the Knicks. They lost their energy and rebounding guy and defensive guy and Hartenstein. And Mitchell Robinson was supposed to take over the starting spot, but he was never the same in previous seasons, all because of him dealing with injuries constantly. And in order for the Knicks to stay in contention, they went ahead and got a guy like Cat, who's the best three-point shooting big man of all time and a guy that can grab double-digit rebounds and on the defensive side of the ball, he can be a competent defender when need be. Now, of course, the concern is his injury history and most importantly, his performances down the stretch when the team needed him the most in the playoffs. And that is one of the reasons why the Timberwolves decided to move on with him because he could not show up in crucial moments, especially in the conference finals last year. And plus the Timberwolves were over the cap, so they needed to free up cap space. Now talking about the Timberwolves briefly, the Timberwolves got themselves a legit two-way guy in DiVincenzo to be another legit guy off the bench and pairing with guys like Nobbs Reed, Nikhil Alexander Walker, and Rob Dillingham, the Timberwolves might possibly have the best bench in the NBA. Now of course they got Julius Randle who in my opinion is glad that the Knicks got rid of him. He was a locker room cancer and overall play all over those years he's played at an all-star level has been fluky because in the playoffs he was one of the worst players in the playoffs from 21 and 23 respectively and it's even gotten to the point where coach Tibbs had to bench Randall in crucial moments in the playoffs especially against the Cavs a couple seasons back for Julius Randall's sake this is a place where he has another opportunity to reinvent himself and be a legit second option behind Anthony Edwards for the T-Wolves because this team can't afford to be a setback because Julius Randall decided to be a dickhead with his shot selection and being a poor teammate Another note I want to make is that the T-Wolves did give up size on the post because Julius Randle is, is a pretty undersized forward as compared to Cat, and with a lack of size down low to support Rudy Gobert, especially in the pick and roll, teams like the Nuggets and specifically Jokic will take more advantage of. OKC comes in mind and others to make a view. So essentially you can say that this trade that the Timberwolves made makes no sense. Essentially, you get a bench player and a worse player and then catch in this deal. Now, back to the Knicks side of things. Yes, they did get rid of Dante DiVincenzo, but the Knicks got Mikhail Bridges in a trade and he has proven to be a legit second option type guy for a championship team. He is a two-way level player held with Phoenix. He was even at one point a first team all defensive type player and was second in DPOY voting two years ago. So now being in a reduced role, I think that Mikhail Bridges can go back to being that elite two-way player that he was with Phoenix, and he is definitely an upgrade to DiVincenzo. They also re-signed Ananobi on a max deal, and we saw how much better he is with the Knicks compared to RJ Barrett. That along with getting Carl Anthony Towns, I think that the Knicks, if healthy, are the biggest threats to the Boston Celtics and yes, over the Philadelphia 76ers. You have your borderline superstar point guard in Jalen Brunson, a star big in Carl Anthony Towns, a star two-way player in Mikhail Bridges, and another two-way player in OJ Ananobi. And they're not finished just yet. There are possible moves of trading Mitchell Robinson before or during the season. 
Him being a first round draft pick in 2018, a shot blocking specialist and rebounder was held up with injuries, like I said, last couple of years. And it's looking like it's time for the Knicks to move on from him. And they need another guy that can take his spot. Guys that comes to mind, like Robert Williams is a good pickup. Mason Plumlee comes to mind. And even a guy like Jackson Hayes. Aside from Cat, who's gonna be his backup? So the Knicks definitely need to go after a, a center till the deadline. Aside from that, the Knicks have a really good bench consisting of Miles McBride, a good 3 and D player who can bring energy off the bench. Campaign, who's also a good bench player. Bojan Bogdanovic, a great shooting wing off the bench and also can give you 11 points. And last but not least, Josh Hart, who's one of the best role players in the NBA and a utility player who can also spread the floor. I see Josh Hart becoming a six man of the year candidate this upcoming season. Like I said, they are lacking in size in that bench department, so the Knicks should go after not one, but a couple of big guys who can bring energy and play defense. So the Knicks and the Timberwolves trade is a win-win for both teams as far as their financial concerns goes, because for the Timberwolves to keep cash for the long term, they will have to pay the luxury tax because his contract won't end until the 28th season and will take a 61 million dollar player option as well as paying anthony edwards and for rudy gobert's sake he will by the time have another big contract and so the timberwolves were in crossroads whether to keep carl anthony towns or get rid of him and getting rid of him was the best move they've made to free up their cast base as for the Knicks, we all know that the Knicks have the biggest market in the NBA and someone like Cash contract is something that the Knicks can handle. And that move will be worth it if Cash show up and play at a star level and show up where the Knicks need him the most, especially in the middle of the playoffs because they will not have a chance against the Celtics if Cap plays like ass. Going back to the Timberwolves, Julius Randle only has two years left of his contract. What the Timberwolves can do is they can trade him along with a first round pick they acquired in the recent trade, along with a couple of more picks and send it to the Utah Jazz in exchange for, you guessed it, Laurie Markkinen. This contract is cheaper for the T-Wolves to handle and I think if they can do this trade, it will make so much sense as far as fit goes. Anthony Edwards and Laurie Markkinen duo will feed families. Markkinen is not only a better offensive player than Katz, but a better defender than him. And if Minnesota makes this trade, boy, the Western Conference is up for trouble. But anyways, the Knicks acquiring Katz has moved the Knicks into championship contender status and adding two more moves mid-season will solidify that. They are the biggest threat to the Boston Celtics and give them a run for their money in the Western Conference. If this team stays healthy and Katz shows up, then the Knicks are legit contenders. If not, then they are pretenders. As for the Timberwolves, they got a worse player in Randall, but a great bench guy in DiVincenzo, and they will likely use Randall for a better player in Markkanen. But as far as the overall trade goes, the Knicks are the winners of that trade. They got a better player in the center position in Cat. They didn't give up very key players other than DiVincenzo, and because of that, it moved them to legit final contenders in the Eastern Conference. That's the video. Let me know about the Knicks. Are the Knicks legit contenders or pretenders? Like I said, let me know. Be sure to subscribe for more NBA content and smash the like button if you enjoyed this Knicks video. Turn on post notifications and that is all. Stay litty. This is the A-Man Show. Sign out.